Yo, imagine this for me. You wake up from a beautiful slumber. I mean, you feel refreshed. You feel energized. I mean, your chakra levels are nice and recharged. You fold some clothes, play some music, even get killed in Call of Duty a few times. And before you step outside to tackle today's adventures, you decide to hop on Instagram for a few minutes. After laughing at a couple of memes or disagreeing with a couple of hot button opinions, boom. News of a Megamind sequel and a trailer has released. Your blood starts pumping, your face is beaming with excitement, your, your head is filled with all of these memories of this underrated gem. Visuals that are dazzling, characters that are charming, voice work that is inspiring, storytelling that is engaging, humor that is delightful. And these ain't the only memories, oh no. You also remember quoting this movie with classmates. You remember seeing clips of Megamind doing the Dougie and video essay upon video essay for years and years about how great this movie is. Basically just calling it genius, a masterpiece ahead of its time. Basically all the great terms that you want for a movie. So boom, you rush to the living room because you can't watch this trailer on your little itty bitty phone like nah you can you need that big 4k tv screen experience this is a moment finally we're here it is time you're about to click play on this trailer and before you do so you notice that it's uploaded to the peacock kids youtube channel so once you recover from the initial shock of this what follows is quite possibly the most insulting minute and 38 seconds in trailer history, if you ask me. That glowing grin quickly turns to a disappointing scowl as you're greeted with cheap animation, unfamiliar voices, lazy writing, and quite frankly, some really lousy dialogue. Until I can stop them, we must keep up evil appearances. That's pretty devious. Jesus H. Christ. Dissatisfied, you close the app, you turn off the TV, and you wonder, how does this even make sense? For those who are unaware, DreamWorks Animation released Megamind on November 5th, 2010. It was a moderate success at the box office, but far from their biggest hits, such as Shrek, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda, you know, the big guys. However, as I mentioned earlier, the years that followed saw Megamind gain this really huge cult following. Film fans and especially fans of animation were coming back to revisit this movie and finding new things to love about it. Unfortunately, a proper sequel just never got greenlit, which is really similar to another DreamWorks movie that had a weak box office but oceans of potential, Rise of the Guardians. But that's another topic for another day. So here we are, approaching 14 years since the original film was released, and in my opinion, we're doing something really dumb. Let's think about this for a second. What does the Megamind fan base look like today? Well, I'm sure some of us may be 17, 18, 19, and some others may be in their mid 30s, maybe even 40s, and maybe even older than that. I mean, you guys know, fan bases kind of come in all shapes and sizes these days. But from my perspective, I feel like the fan base is mostly 20 year olds. So keep that in mind. Nearly every movie studio today is focused on one thing, IP. They want recognizable brands that already have established fan bases so that half of the work is done before they even start working. Call it lazy, call it smart business, this is what's going on. It just is what it is. So back to the fan base being 20 year olds. I know this, it seems like I'm going all over the place, but it's, it's gonna come together. Just bear with me a little bit. So the reason that the fan base mostly consists of 20 year olds is because DreamWorks has pretty much ignored this brand for over 10 years. There aren't a bunch of spinoffs and games and shows and merchandise that can grab the attention of a whole bunch of other demographics. It's really just whoever was around and whoever was in the main movie's demographic when it came out. <clears throat> Pardon me. So Megamind never really got the chance to cross over and become one of these mega properties like Mario, Scooby-Doo, Looney Tunes, you know, not that it needed to be as huge as those properties, just making the point that it didn't ever get to a position where there were multiple groups of different peoples involved in the fan base, at least from what I've seen. There's only the original film. So why then would you decide to take this property that you've done nothing with for the better part of 13 years that has a fan base that is in their 20s today and make a sequel to it catering to little children and send it directly to Peacock. That don't 
make no sense. That don't make no sense. Someone that was born on December 31st, 2010, they're 13 today. Uh, Far too old to be watching whatever y'all are advertising here. So let's do the math, right? We got Peacock, which is not one of the most popular streaming services out there. I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just being honest. And we have a fan base that is not gonna sign up for Peacock just to watch this. I mean, nobody that doesn't have Peacock is gonna watch this trailer for Mega Mind versus the Doom Syndicate and go, man, I better make sure I got Peacock so I can watch that. It's not happening, bro. We also have teenagers who probably don't even know what Megamind is. And even if they do, they're still way too old to be watching whatever this is. So you're left with just little, little, little children who probably don't know who Megamind is either. So all in all, there's just confusion on who this is for. So with all that said, nobody's signing up, which means you're not making money from it. And barely anybody's gonna watch this thing, so it's not gonna really get the views either. And this is a one-two punch that'll lead it to being removed from Peacock. And without a theatrical release and without a physical media release, trust me, it's not gonna get one, just trust me. This whole thing will just fade into obscurity to never be heard of again. We'll be left right where we started with the original movie. And look, this is the end of what I had written down, so the rest of this is not going to be as structured and you know focused i'm coming off the dome a little bit with these last few thoughts but this is just a small example of what's been happening with these streaming services and with a lot of these programs and movies for the past couple of years you know projects are getting made and they're getting put on these services and they're not resulting in the views that they want or they're not resulting in the signups that they want and these things are getting pulled off these services and there's like no way to watch them. So I can't believe anybody that would try to tell me that this new Megamind movie is going to be successful. It won't. But you know, the biggest problem with this trailer isn't even everything that I just talked about. The biggest problem with this trailer is that it looks like you just threw it together. It looks like you barely gave it a budget. The animation looks terrible. It doesn't at all resemble the fluidness or the style or the presentation of the original film. Not having the original voice cast back is a huge hurt to this film because that was one of the biggest W's of Megamind, you know? DreamWorks had kind of fallen into this trap where they hire popular voices instead of hiring talented voices. But this is one of the exceptions where the voice cast really brought their a game they killed it but in this trailer it just seems like you got well generic cartoon character voices i mean i don't know it just doesn't feel like there's any personality it feels like all the soul of these characters has just been sucked out or adorable in a pushy sort of way here's a souvenir it's either a paperweight or a flash grenade. So careful with that. It doesn't look like you put any care into this. And how can we believe that you put any care into it when it is yet another movie that is going directly to streaming? I mean, this is disrespectful, I feel like. The Megamind fan base is big. I know we didn't really show up in the box office all those years ago, but time has only proved that Megamind has stood the test of it. I attest that if you actually made a Megamind sequel that looked like you put effort into it, we would show up for a great sequel, but you chose not to do that. You chose to make a really cheap, straight to streaming sequel that nobody's gonna watch. And the show that you're making is probably gonna just get that one season and it's gonna get pulled off the service to never be talked about or mentioned again. And that's probably the worst part of all of this. You take something that is respected and has a fan base, you do something cheap with it, you basically sit in there and you make some boo-boo, you basically go, hey, Megamind fans, come here, I got something for you, I got something for you, it's gonna be real special, I got something for you, you ready? You ready? You ready? <gasps> and then when we reject it and go, well, this is some bullshit, then you're gonna look at your data and your spreadsheets and you're gonna go, oh, nobody wants to watch Megamind. When that's not the truth. We just don't wanna watch Megamind versus the Doom Syndicate. Honestly, as a fan, and I know a lot of you are gonna agree with me, Megamind deserves better.